All right, so now we're on to section four, and we're gonna talk about the top 10 tips of finding your unique voice. So if you're ready, let's get started. So finding your unique voice in, when writing a memoir is like finding your personal style. You know, I, I like to wear classics or I, I always have a leather purse, you know, whatever it is, it's you. And so finding your unique voice is going to become the same thing, you. It's going to take a little bit of time as you get through this, though, it, it is going to become much more simple and streamlined. But number one, write like you talk. And sometimes you may talk a little too casually, but even then, especially in a memoir, I recommend just be authentic, write like you talk. It, don't type it is, it is, it is. Say it's, because you talk, you probably, say it's. Uh, so don't hesitate to use some slang. Uh, obviously, if you want people to read it, you don't want to be overly offensive. But again, if you're being authentic, then sometimes you may be offensive to some people. Uh, but write like you talk. Number two, don't be afraid to be yourself. You know, that's kind of an extension of number one. Don't conform to other people's expectations of you. This is your memoir, your story, your journey. Let it be that. Don't be afraid to be who you really are. Number three, read wi widely. What I mean by that is read other people's memoirs, read the successful ones, the ones that you maybe never heard of because maybe they weren't as successful. Um, but there's some that are, you know, just very well loved and, and it doesn't have to necessarily be from someone who was famous because sometimes their fame makes it a bestseller automatically. But if you, if you find the bestseller memoirs that weren't famous people, you may find some incredible memoirs there. So read widely, figure out, you know, their styles, figure out who you are, how you, you compare to them, how you contrast, and, and then that will help you find your own voice as well. Number four, practice writing every day. Now, some people will say, I'm too busy. I just don't have time to do this. You do. You do, even if it means taking an iPad into the bathroom with you. You've got three minutes, you've got five, you've got 10 minutes. You can find some time each day to spend with yourself for yourself going through something like this. A lot of people really, they don't triage their time properly. And, you know, maybe the priority shouldn't be to watch three hours of TV every night. And I'm not judging that because I've, I've done the same thing. But uh, if this is important to you, and it should be because it really will help work through some of these things that you've gone through in your life and, and sharing those stories, but you need to prioritize this. You need to find a little bit of self-discipline and practice writing every day. Uh, number five, experiment with different writing styles. And what I mean by that is, you know, you, your voice, but like we've talked about, you're, you're more casual here, you're more formal here, you have different styles. Figure out which one suits you the best. You'll know what you're more comfortable with. You're, you'll know when you're able to just start typing and, and it just flows out of you. Uh, when that happens, that's probably your style right there. Now, number six, focus on your strengths. Identify what your strengths as a writer are and focus on developing those things first. Now, you're gonna have weaker areas that we, you'll probably wanna catch up as well, but at first, go with where you're already strong and get better. Uh, you, you do have the ability to be because uh, you just create more memorable work when you get really good at some things. And then number seven, write with purpose. You know, identify what the purpose of your memoir is and write to that destination. Always keep your eye on that goal. 
Now you will probably at times want to throw in, you know, about you and dad going for the ice cream cone because that's a great memory and your reader will probably appreciate that too. It gives your character extra depth and and so don't take those out necessarily, but always keep your main focus on your destination and your and your end goal of where your your story is going to end. Uh, keep that in mind and then that way you're not always like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel because I promise you, <laughs> a lot of us are easily squirreled. Uh, number eight, share your personal experiences. And, you know, just your, your personal experiences, your emotions, how, how going through this made you feel. Um, again, using your dialogue, uh, but share those emotions uh, and, and it will help the reader really understand you. And when that reader understands you, they're rooting for you. And that's what we need, right? We want to know that that we didn't go through all of this and felt alone all those years, all those weeks, all the whatever, you know, through that time. You felt alone and you felt like, you know, I may not make it through this, but knowing that later as you share your story that someone else is right there with you, it, it, it makes everything feel so much better. You're stronger, they're stronger. It's, it's just an amazing uh, end result. So number nine, and I've said this before, edit ruthlessly. Things that mean something to you may not mean anything to your reader. So you either need to make sure either by going back and editing that, you know, maybe you need to, instead of uh, leaving the ice cream scene in, maybe you take it out because it has no meaning and, and it just doesn't feed your character at all. Maybe this, maybe that. But if it really does give your character depth, which it entirely could, um, you don't want to, dis to delete it maybe, what you would want to do is edit and then go back to something else and, and kind of, it's called foreshadowing. We may talk about it later in one of my other videos. Um, make sure you're subscribed, by the way. But um, when, when you have some foreshadowing earlier where you talk about, you know, your maybe, I don't want to call it daddy issues or uh, but maybe you're a daddy's girl or a tomboy and, and maybe when you started to turn into a young lady, uh, it, things got awkward. You know, whatever it is, um, you, can, you can set it up back here and then land it in a later part of, the, of your memoir. And really, it'll, it'll mean a lot to your reader at that point because they already know how you felt here. And then for, you know, having that ice cream trip or whatever it is, that special moment that means something to you will now mean something to your reader too. But if you can't make it make sense, if you can't make your reader uh, feel what you felt, then you want to cut that out. Remember, you don't delete anything. You want to cut that out, paste it into a different document, let it be there. Don't get rid of it, but just take it out of this story because not every story is meant to be in this story and keep that part in mind. And you know, number 10, just be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process. Finding your unique voice takes time. It takes practice and be patient and just keep writing. You will find it and Sometimes you may get lucky and it's just natural. It'll just drop straight out. Other times it's going to take practice. But as you get there, you're you're going to you're going to be so glad that you took the time, that you took the effort and you're going to have an amazing memoir. So here we are. We're getting ready to go on into the next chapter. I'm going to release you with get out there have fun and let your creativity soar.